Let's talk a little more about the emergency preparedness and response plans. Now, again, I'm in Texas and we have very um, detailed regulations around emergency preparedness. We have to have a plan, but we also have to do either activate that plan or do a drill every single year. So if you've already activated your plan, great. As long as it's documented, check. If it's not documented, get in there this month and make sure that you finish that up, okay? Um, and if not, if you've not done a plan yet, then you just need to do a drill and you have until the end of the year to do it. So a drill takes a few hours. You need to include all of your clients and all of your staff, okay? Um, in Texas, we have specific requirements about what goes into an emergency preparedness and response plan. So check your state regulations, see if some of this applies to you. We have to have mitigation. Mitigation means determining what could happen in your area, in your service area, in the regions that you service. So what happens often? Is it flooding? Is it pandemic and epidemic? That should be in everybody's emergency plan now. Is it um, maybe you have a lot of industrial plants in the area, so there's potential for hazardous materials. Maybe you live on the coast, so there's potential for hurricanes or typhoons if you're on the Pacific coast look and see what could be happening, what do we need to prepare for, okay? That's what mitigation means, looking and seeing what, what do we need to look for. And then there's preparedness, and that is mostly staff training, what is expected of your staff when there is an emergency. And so you may wanna give your staff tools about what they can do to prepare for an emergency in their own home and with their own family, but they also need to know what's expected of them in regard to client care and working shifts when there is a, a natural disaster or any kind of emergency that occurs. The second part of preparedness is planning with your clients. They need to understand that you are not their emergency backup, okay? Because if there's an emergency, it's going to affect your agency and your employees may not be able to come. So they need an alternate plan. And emergency planning should happen when you do an admission, but if, if you're not quite happy with it, then the next time you go to do a supervisory visit, maybe you go ahead and spend some time emergency planning with those clients. That is what covers your preparedness. Response. So there needs to be details in the plan about how you're going to do things, how you're going to find out about the emergency, how you're going to contact your clients and staff when there is an emergency, what form of communication you're going, you're going to use if electricity is down or internet is down. Um, where do you find out about all this information, okay? And then the response itself is when you document the activated plan or the drill. And that needs to cover the what happened, when is it happening, where is it affecting people, um, how are we communicating, what are we checking with, um, is there gonna be an evacuation or not, do you need to make sure that your clients have potable water if there's a problem with the water supply or food that can be eaten without electricity and preparing, um, and then who all it affects and who all was included in the drill or the plan. So that should be, again, all of your clients and all of your staff. And then the last element that needs to be in your emergency preparedness is recovery. So how are we going to resume normal business or new normal business, right? After COVID, we're in a new normal. Nothing is the way it was before. So you need to look at how business operations are going to resume, how client care is going to resume. And then you just look back and say, how did it go? Let's look really deep at the good, the bad, and the ugly. What could we have done better? And then you take that information, say, well, next time there's an emergency or drill, we're going to do this and this differently. And you document all of those things. It can be in a narrative, it can be on a form. One of those things where there's not really a wrong way to document it as long as you are documenting it, okay? Now, if you need a plan or a documentation template, go to slusherconsulting.com and I can certainly help you out.